what to do this month in March, what to plant, what to get ready, what garden chores should you be after? That's what we're talking about today. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Welcome to the Road by Road Garden Show where we talk all things growing your own food and we own like a little small company here in South Georgia, Hoss Tools, where we sell supplies, tools, and seeds, everything you need to grow your own food. And plants. And plants. Yep, everything you need right here. And we try to give you a little inspiration and information along the way. My name's Greg and this is Sheila, my wife here. And we're glad to have you today. What in the world have, have you got going on in your garden? Ooh, garden peas are sprouting up. I planted some squash. Those are from yours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Mine aren't that big. I know. I got a really good strawberry crop, and I lay it to the fact it's in my lazy garden. Because you guys know uh, we plant our strawberries in the fall of the year and over winter. And I use the lazy garden mat. And that really makes a nice strawberry. You gotta have, you just yeah. about gotta have some type of mulch or weed barrier for strawberries. Well, I have mulch in mine. Yeah, but this, I think the weed barrier heats up a little bit more. Uh, and I think that's the reason I'm gonna I mean, make. I've got strawberries, they're just half the size. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, others nice. Mine, mine are more like that size. Yeah. Chandler strawberries, the variety, folks, we sell them in the fall of the year. Mm. Man, I love growing strawberries here. Mm. We taste them? Oh, wow. it's sweet. Mm. I think Chandler, to me, is the best garden variety to grow. There may be some other varieties out there that do better in other situations, but for a home garden variety, very sweet. And the birds really aren't messing with yours. Mm -mm. I'm still having bird don't put that in there. issues. What else you got going on? Plant them a squash. I got zinnias and sunflowers in the greenhouse. Um, got my beds ready. I put some compost and some worm castings. Yeah. In there. Um, getting it ready for my tomatoes in a couple of weeks. Yep. And uh, same way here, I'm getting planned out. You know, the planning stage to me is important because I got to remember because I don't write down like I should. I don't journal as I should sometimes. What did I plant two years ago? We won't all keep all these things on the right rotation, so we don't want to plant tomatoes where tomatoes was last year, the year before, squash and things like that. So planning out is where I'm at now. Yeah, and it's time to get that ground ready for those tomatoes. Yeah, in fact, I may I may plant a tomato yeah. too. Yeah, I may plant an early Yeah, We had Donnie on the show Sunday night, mm -hmm. and he was talking about getting it ready six weeks. He did, but now that's way that's way more than what I normally do. Now I may plan it out, but I don't get it ready for it. But if you do, yeah. simply put a tarp on it and put it to sleep till you get ready for it. Mm -hmm. Donnie talked a lot about preloading your soil with nutrients. I thought that was interesting as well. I don't do as good a job on that as I usually do that not six weeks, but about two weeks ahead of time. Yep. All right, so let's touch on this right here before we get into the main section of the show, folks. We got plugs available. Plugs available for sale, and we're shipping these out on the first part of the week, Monday and Tuesdays. Is that not a pretty tomato plant? Mm -hmm. Now, this one here is Red Snapper, and I'll kind of give you an idea. This is, comes out of a 128 plug, so that's a decent sized root ball there. A wonderful looking tomato plant there. We have Red Snapper, Better Boy, Better Boy, we Shelby, have Shelby, and Hossinator, and they all look just alike. Right, so and if you want these, we're going to be selling for a couple of weeks if quantities last. Oh, we'll be selling longer than that. It's about four, four or five weeks. Um, but if you want to go ahead and get them, you can get these and just pot them in a, what size cup would you say? Oh, just a bigger bigger pot. Of course, you want to plant them deep. But you can yeah. step these up and they'll be ready for you when you get ready yeah. for them. So now, I'm going to plant mine directly out of this plug into the ground. But if they wasn't ready for them up yeah, north, they, they step could them step them up. All right, here's our peppers. Our peppers are grown in a 338 because it's got a lot smaller root ball there for the peppers there. And we've got jalapeno, we've got bell pepper. Gold got, Rush banana. Banana pear and poblano pepper. So you can order any of those. And then we have, I just picked this one up. 
This is kale. This is also grown in a 338. We got kale, Blue Ridge kale. We got broccoli, green magic. We got cauliflower, twister variety, and we got stonehead cabbage plants available too, grown in a 338 tray. They all look good. So that being said, plugs available. We'll have them available for the next few weeks. You can place your order anytime. And we're going to be shipping them out the first part of the week, Monday and Tuesdays. And the reason for that, most of these plants ship USPS priority. We ship them out first part of the week. You get them by the end of the week, and everything will be fine so you can get them in your garden. So get those spots ready and get on your mind. If you didn't start your own seeds and you need some transplants, we got them for you. Potato slips. Potato slips. This is our first year selling sweet potato slips. So uh, we have them on the website. They're available for purchase. And we have three different varieties. We got uh, Georgia Jet. We got four varieties. Excuse me, four varieties. We got Georgia Jet. We got uh, Covington. We got Beauregard. And we got a white potato there. Masaki, I believe is the name of it. And it's more of a novelty type thing. The most popular one is probably Covington. Mm -hmm. Covington is a newer variety. It's one I've grown for the last few years. Let's give everybody a quick rundown on, on potatoes because I get this question sometimes. What potato to plant? Is Georgia Jet is going to probably be the highest sugar content of any of them. It's not going to make it as uniform as a potato as some of the rest of them, but it's going to be the sweetest there. A great variety. Covington is my all-around favorite. I feel like it's got the best of everything in it. It's a bigger, more uniform tomato. It's a good sweet potato, and it's got good disease resistance to it. And then we have Beauregard. Beauregard has come on the scene in the last few years, and people love it. And one good thing about Beauregard, it's easiest of any of them to grow. It's more forgiving on fertility and other things there. So if you're a first-time sweet potato grower, you may want to go with the Beauregard. It's a good potato, but it's known to be easy to grow. And then the Masaki, I would not, that wouldn't be my only sweet potato. If you want to plant it along some of the rest of them, it's so great to have an addition to that. It's kind of a, a, it's a different type of potato. Mm -hmm. So they will have potatoes. And they will not start shipping out until April 15th. Yeah, so here's the deal, folks. If you live in an area where you want to plant the end of April, you can go ahead and place your order, and we'll start shipping right after April 15th. However, if you do not need them then, wait till you need them to order them. So if you live up north and you don't need to plant them to the end of May, wait till the end of May. We're going to have plenty of supplies to place your order then, and we'll get it out. Um, on our website, on the product page, Sweet Potato Slips, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, gives you a chart there showing when you need to plant your potatoes for where you live at. So that's really helpful there. Just keep in mind, don't order them till you need them. All right, so right now, we're going to be talking about what you need to do now. This is always a popular show for us because everybody wants to know Am I staying on target what I need to be doing? And we're going to start with Zone 5. We know nothing about Zone 5. <laughs> so if it's still cold there. Still cold there. If you're in Zone 5, if you would please put in the comments below what you're doing in your garden now. That would be a huge benefit to everybody yeah. else. Now, when we leave Zone 5, we're going to have a pretty good idea of what you need to be doing, but we don't have a clue about Zone 5. So share with us in the comments below <laughs> what you need to be doing for Zone 5, and that'll help us out and help everybody else as well. All right, so let's move on into Zone, zone. 6. Zone we do six. have somebody in Zone we 6. We do have somebody in Zone 6. So... We got Mike, which is a buddy of ours, and we got Kenny, which is a buddy of ours, up in Zone 6 in Ohio. And I spoke to them a couple of days ago. And I said, boys, well, it was late in the afternoon I called them. I said, because they all, all love garden. I knew I could count on these two guys right here, Mike Smith and Kenny Adams. We've I actually said, been to their place. Yeah, nice place. And I, and I know these guys know. So uh, they said, okay, this is what's going on right now. We probably going to be putting out some brassicas within the next two weeks. However, that's going to be a little bit early. So you still early? have... Yes. Hmm. You still have time for your zone six to get your brassicas seeded in the greenhouse to grow out your broccoli, your cauliflowers, and things like that. Uh, he said probably in a couple of weeks they would be putting some out, but that's going to be a little bit early. So you're probably going to be looking at the end of March 
before you need to transplant those out into the garden. Or so you could order them to, from us. Or you can order them from us. Uh, next thing he talked about was onions. They're probably going to be put planting, now this is transplants, into their garden later on this month here. He said they need three or four good days of weather to put them out so they can get established a little bit. So they don't the overwinter theirs? No, they can't overwinter them at all. Uh, they can do some weird things with their, they got a couple of hoop houses, but that's the average person don't have those hot houses or or high tunnel things like that. They can do some unusual things there, but to go outside with their onions, probably around the end or end of the month for transplants on that right there. Seed potatoes, the same thing. They're probably looking at the end of the month on planting their seed potatoes. Hmm. We've got ours planted. Are yours up? Oh, they're not up yet, but I've got them planted. I planted them about a week ago. So they're probably about four to six weeks behind us. They won't plant their corn till the middle of next month, and we plant now. And they're doing corn. carrots now. Plant carrots. So he said now's the ideal time to plant carrots. I thought it was strange because we overwinter our carrots most of the time. We can plant them in spring, but we like to overwinter ours. They plant their their carrots now. Their radishes, their beets, things like that. They get them planted, direct seeded. They're getting their gardens ready for the big push, which is going to probably come next month for those. If you're in zone six, you probably need to go ahead and get your tomatoes and peppers started. It's going to take you about six weeks to grow your tomatoes out. That's going to put you out about the middle of April. That's going to be a probably, oh, it might be a little bit early. I'd go ahead and start my peppers. Peppers are going to take you eight to ten weeks and then maybe wait a week or two. Well, it's almost the middle of March, isn't it, now? No. Nah. Well, it's the second week in March. Yeah, so, yeah, you could probably go ahead and start your tomatoes, and they'll be ready around the end of April. That'd be about right. So plant your tomatoes. Of course, get your peppers, eggplants, and everything right started in your seed starting trays to be ready. Get your game plan together uh, and be ready to go with it when the weather does break. Another thing he told me, which is strange, plant clover. Now, we don't want to think about plant clover. Now is a good time for them guys up there to plant clover, especially if you're putting it out where you're not going to be gardening early in the springtime. you got an area that's laying, laying out. Put some clover out there. It's a good time to get that started. All right, so let's all move into zone number seven, which gets closer to us. Mm -hmm. All right, if you haven't started your tomatoes and peppers, fine, you definitely want to get on the ball there on that. So you may be running just a little bit behind, but you still got time to get those tomatoes, peppers, all that kind of stuff started. Also, you could still plant you some brassicas if you wanted to, or you could be transplanting brassicas uh, in your area probably about now. Mm -hmm. You could be putting out your kales and your broccolis and your cauliflowers now. you got uh, time to get those in and still make a really good And seed crop. potatoes. Seed potatoes, it's time for you to be putting out your seed potatoes Anywhere in this month here, you'll be good to put out your seed potatoes there. And onions, you probably need to be starting your onions if you not starting, but putting your onion transplants out if you hadn't already. And of course, direct sow your carrots, your Swiss chard, your things, beets and radishes. And English all that peas. Stuff. English peas, yeah. You can get those out. And then you can be getting everything ready because you guys are going to be planting your corn probably by the end of the month, your sweet corn, and maybe your field corn next month there. And flowers. And flowers. Start your zinnias and sunflowers inside. Zinnias takes about four weeks, and sunflowers takes about four weeks for us. So if you start them now, you're going to have plenty of time. What about melons? You guys in Zone 7 need to be starting your melons, whether you want to grow watermelons, cantaloupes, or most melons. Now's the time to get those in there. I grow mine out in about a four-week period there, so that's going to be perfect for you guys to transplant them out there about 10th, 11th, 12th of April. Mm -hmm. We'll get ours planted here in the next little bit. And the next one is the coveted Zone 8. Now, we know a little bit about Zone 8, don't we, Mobile Hawks? Mm -hmm. So your tomatoes and peppers should have already been started. Oh, yeah, yeah. But even if you didn't, we got them for you. We got them for you right here. Now. Don't worry. Some people say Zone 8 is a little bit early. 
And it may be just a tad early. If you're in the bottom end of zone A, you can probably go ahead and plant your tomatoes. The commercial guys around here within the next two weeks will get their tomatoes planted. I'm probably gonna go ahead and put me out a very early plant mm -hmm. and uh, get me one row in. I'll come behind that in a couple weeks and plant me another plant there. But I'm gonna get an early crop in and see how they do. Uh, peppers, same thing. I think within the next two to three weeks, you can get all your peppers in, eggplants, and all those warm season crops. You should have your potatoes in the ground. Should have your potatoes in the ground. Should be coming up, and you should be working on those, healing them up, and uh, getting some fertilizer to them. Corn. Now's the time to plant sweet corn. You've got this whole month's a good time to really? plant sweet corn. I yeah. thought it was the end of March. No, 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 no. The old times around right here started at the end of February. Now, not many wow. people do that anymore because we've learned that if you plant it in the middle of March, you can make get just the same. Good, same effect. Uh, so, yeah, now's a great time to get sweet corn in. I would probably wait to the end of the month to put field corn in, but, yeah, get sweet corn in. Are you planting any field corn this year? I am, but I'm going to stagger it. So I'm going to get my sweet corn in first, and then I'm going to wait about three to four weeks, and I'm going to put me a crop of uh, hickory king, I think, this year. I had not grown hickory king in a long time. But we're going to grow hickory king. I may grow Jimmy Red in the fall. I grew Jimmy Red in the spring last year. Yeah. All right. Flowers. Mm -hmm. Flowers, flowers, flowers. And what about herbs? Yeah, I've got my herbs going. They're a little bit slower. I've had them going, what, three weeks ago? Mm -hmm. But yeah, not, not too late. Yeah, and tobacco. So I planted my tobacco, and it, I mean, you're talking about slow growing. That's a slow growing crop there. It's just now getting up where I can start hitting the fertilizer, and it takes a good eight to 10 weeks to grow it off. So patience is going gonna, is gonna to test. My, my patience is going to be tested on this tobacco, but I got it up and going. If you want to grow some tobacco, I would highly recommend you go ahead and get it planted in zone eight. And uh, we're going to be, we got onions besides the mm -hmm. We've been eating onions every night. Yeah, so our onions are starting to come in. We'll be harvesting uh, elephant garlic and onions next month. Mm -hmm. Roselle, get that planted. Roselle, get that planted. Uh, Indoors. Because it takes a while for Roselle. We've learned that the hard way. And, man, get everything ready. Get your plan laid out. Get your, your spots preloaded with compost. If you don't have compost, find you a good source of compost close by and just lay it to it. Some complete organic fertilizer. Yep, and then we like to work that in and uh, a week or so before plant and get going. Now, I've got some brassicas planted. A lot of people on our Robo Road group keep saying, oh, if you're in zone eight, you can't plant brassicas now, it's going to get too hot. But I've just planted, because I'm experimenting with a couple of different kinds of collards. Mm -hmm. I've got two old heirlooms that I've acquired that I'm growing out for a test plot there. And you know what? We do wonderful brassicas all the way up into May. So we even grow cabbage around here all up to harvest it in mm -hmm. May. So we've got plenty of time to still grow some brassicas. I feel like brassicas get overlooked a lot of times in the springtime. It's one of those varieties, the one my mother was looking mm -hmm. for. Cabbage collards. Cabbage collards. She has looked everywhere. You finally found her I some. I finally found some. And I planted some as well. And I got another one called Alabama Blue that I got planted next to it that I'm all, I'm working on those two. I love working on those heirloom collards. But anyway, back to the brassicas. I feel like they get overlooked because we're focused so much on our warm season crops this time of year. But, hey, you can plant you some uh, brassicas now, and they'll come in. You'll have plenty to eat in that winter before your tomatoes and all that squash and everything gets ready. Speaking of squash, I've got summer squash planted. Yeah, I do too. But now I will wait on my winter squash probably toward the end of the month. Winter squash, to me, takes a little bit warmer weather than uh, my winter squash does. I mean, my summer squash. Mm -hmm. So I plant my, my uh, winter squash probably around the last week of April. I've already planted my summer squash. I will do another plant of summer squash mm -hmm. so that you have plenty coming in there. It's a session there. Yeah. Some of the guys around here plant their summer squash at the end of February as well. Now, if you get lucky mm -hmm. and you don't have any cold spell, you can make a real early uh, squash crop. 
You tried that last year. It didn't work. It failed, didn't it? It failed. Yep. Watermelons, uh, some wild watermelons. I will transplant my watermelons around the 1st of March. So the end of April, 1st of March, I'll get my watermelons in the soil there. So you in Zone 8, you can still get a later crop of watermelons in. If you haven't started them, you can start them now, grow them off in four weeks, and you can still get them transplanted out the uh, first part of April will be fine. But you need to do it ASAP there on that. What about beans? Beans, it's time to plant beans. You got this month, here's a good time to plant beans. Yep. Now I would hold off on peas a little bit. Now your English peas would be fine, but I would hold off on my cow peas at least another month on those. They like hotter weather. Yeah, I get those beans growing and uh, pole Cucumbers. beans, bush beans, cucumbers get those planted as well this month we like to direct okra? okra need to wait we're gonna wait the next month on okra because it soil needs to warm up on it lettuce go ahead and get your lettuce transplanted out now i've got some i just put out a couple of days ago we can shoot the, the juice of that lettuce and we'll have plenty of salad in the next little bit still got time to get beets radishes in for a quick crop some of those make pretty doggone quick 30 45 days so you'll have some good eating there in the month of April if you get them planted now. All right, zone nine, which is you guys two weeks below us. Warm season crops, you should be in full force on planting everything right now. All your summer crops you can get into the ground, including your, your uh, corn. Okra, I would still wait probably two weeks before I planted okra. And maybe I wouldn't put Roselle in the ground yet. Now, if you're going to direct seed Roselle, I'd wait next month. If you're going to transplant them, yes, get them in the greenhouse like we do. But uh, everything else, I think you can lay it to it with the exception of cow peas. Wait, maybe a little bit more cow peas. And your flowers, man, they can just go full force. Mm -hmm. Herbs, flowers, and all that kind of stuff. Zone 8. Zone 9, now let's move on to Zone 10. Zone 10. Zone 10, you guys, in way, way south, you can get her done. You can get those warm season crops. I bet they got squash right now. I bet they do, too. You can get that okra, roselle, all that kind of stuff that you was waiting on. You can get it in the ground and get it going. We're a little envious of y'all this time of year because y'all so far ahead of us, but y'all wind up a lot quicker than we do. So Zone 10, you can get her done. They probably got taters on up, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, so there you have it, folks. If you haven't got your seeds ordered for what we talked about today, get them ordered. If you need plants, we're going to have plenty of plants there. And what about Garden Spotlight? Garden Spotlight. So this week we have Claire Gamble from Zone 8, Moss Point, Mississippi. What did Claire send us in? Claire actually... He has Gamble Gardens. I think that's a picture of him. Yeah. I think. But he's got broccoli, tomatoes, um, spring garden starts. Oh, that wasn't it. But there's broccoli, tomatoes. Yeah, there's just starts right there. Man, look at all those. He's got a greenhouse full there. He it? has got a green. It looks like a high tunnel, don't yeah. it? Yeah. So thank you, Claire. And if you have any garden pictures, send them in to us, and we'll spotlight spotlight them. Spotlight your garden. Mm -hmm. All right. Old goat drawing, folks. On the set here somewhere is the old goat figurine. You find it, put the comments below where it's at. We do a draw, and we're going to send you out a nice gift. Now is the time for the drawing. <laughs> All right, and this week's winner is Ricky Hackett. Ricky, found the old goat last week. Ricky, send us your address at customerservehallstools.com. We'll get you a nice little gift in the mail. The old goat's moving around a lot. Yeah, it's trying to find some Easter eggs. Oh, he is? Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Getting that time of year. Corny joke. Yeah, I'm ready. Did you read this in the notes? I just read the joke. I, didn't, I don't have the answer. I just seen what the joke is, but I actually don't have the answer. What's a tomato's favorite dance? You should get this. Ketchup. I don't know. Ketchup's I not a not. dance. Kitty up. I don't know. <laughs> salsa. Oh, that is good. Yeah, salsa. Yeah. That is good. 
Oh, All right, folks. Thank y'all for joining us. Uh, this exciting time of the year, springtime. We always look forward to it every year. Uh, we start to harvest our strawberries, and we're just starting mm -hmm. to eat it. We eat collards two nights in a row. Mm -hmm. We got collards. We're gonna have kale tonight. Can, yeah. We have greens every night. Yeah. So it's that time of year where the garden really pays off, and it's exciting because the time changes Sunday. We we'll have yeah, longer, days. longer days. We can get out there and spend more time in the garden. Just got my beehive. Got my beehive this week, so I'm good on pollination there. Oh, man. Those bees test me every year. But I got a good, fresh beehive that's looking good. My buddy Wayno got it fixed up for me, so I'm in good shape there. If you don't have bees, you probably need to get bees if you don't have a lot of pollinators. We struggle around here with pollinators. That's the reason I like to get a hive of bees every year. All right, folks, thank y'all for joining us. Now it's time for you to get off that couch and get outside and get dirty.